How do we know the love of God? How do we know the love of God? We know the love of God because of the cross and without the cross, we don't know the love of God. This is how God loved us, Paul wrote, that even when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In another place in 1 John, it says, this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and gave his son as a atoning sacrifice for our sins. So you don't know love because of your circumstances, you know love because of the circumstance when Jesus Christ gave his life for you so that you could be alive in a relationship with the Father. That's how you know love. So when you look at your circumstances and go, man, I don't think God loves me. No, that's not how you know God loves you because of your circumstances. You know God loves you because of Jesus' circumstance on the cross when he gave his life for you and it's standing there, an immovable object in time and history and eternity and it's shadow is long and it's looming over you right now and so whenever the enemy comes circumstances come darkness comes anything comes internally or externally against your confidence that you are a loved son or a loved daughter of God where do you go with that you simply go again to the cross and say I know that I am loved by God how do I know look at the cross he said here's what I want you to see I want you to see together with all the saints and to grasp onto how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. So when he described the love of Christ, he painted a cross. It's high and it's wide and it's deep and it's long. It's high enough to get you to a holy God. It's deep enough to go down in your mess to the very bottom and pull you up. It's long enough that no matter how far you've run from God, he is still ahead of you waiting for you to see him. And it is wide enough that there is still the opportunity in this day for God to embrace you and envelop you in his love. How do you know he loves you? because he gave Christ for you. And there will never be a message you will ever hear that will add to that. It's all about seeing it and about believing it and finding finally your value in the devastating beauty of the cross of Christ. It's staggering to me as a casual, semi-casual, somewhat determined observer of your generation. How many of you are walking through life feeling unworthy, not good enough, don't measure up, insignificant, off the radar, Nobody sees, nobody cares. If I weren't here, nobody would even notice. And there's a cross standing in your story today that says, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? When you were down in the muck, in the mire of death, Almighty God came down into the muck and the mire and peeled back the muck and picked up you and bit by bit by bit through the power of the death of a perfect sacrifice and the power of one who could champion over death, hell on the grave. He turned your death into life and your sin into sainthood and your object of wrathness into a holy one of God and you are loved by him tonight no man is ever going to trump that 
No girl's gonna come along and trump that. No job's gonna come along and trump that. No success, no accomplishment, no achievement, no pleasure, no gain is ever going to trump what has already been said. So if you're staring at your phone waiting for somebody to approve you, I just encourage you today, look up at the cross of Jesus Christ and go, I'm not only liked, I'm loved, I'm chosen, I'm valued. I was seen before the foundation of the world, brought into a new family, a adopted by him, raised from the dead, given a new name, son, daughter of almighty God in heaven, that's who I am. I was somebody who, who has great worth to God and I might not have been worthy of Christ, but I was never worthless to Christ. What if you left this stadium tonight and said, I will never again walk unworthy in this world. I don't care what anybody said about me or did to me or what I said to me or did to me. My eyes are open and I just grasped onto something and it was the height and the depth and the width and the length of the love of God in Christ, the devastating beauty of the cross.